Good no. morning, Jerry. Good morning. It's Sal. How you doing? Good. Good morning. Well, I got to head to the boat anyway. So I figured I, uh, I'd take you with me since we're on lockdown. Ola's over here making me coffee. Hey. <laughs> so I head out, and uh, while I'm there, I'll try to get a nice video together for you so you can see what, uh, how nice the marina is. Before I head out to the boat, we're going to have to do a birthday. Last night, the kids made uh, a birthday cake for Mama. It's Mama's birthday. Well, I'm headed to the boat, like I said. So uh, this is the way. This is the Tel Aviv-Jerusalem Highway I'm driving on. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of traffic out. It's only the people who are allowed to uh, be out to do work and stuff. It's not near like it is on a normal day. The traffic in Israel is insane. By the way, I don't know how this is coming out because this is a new camera I'm using. It's a small camera I'm using inside the car, so I don't know if you can see me well or not. Hopefully it's good, and hopefully you can hear me. But this is the way to uh, from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv. It's a beautiful way. Well, everything in this country is beautiful. And, uh, and as you can see, it's a lot of plains. And once you get out of the Jerusalem area, the country is pretty much flat until you get up to the north or down to Elah. Well, I made it to Herzliya. Uh, I had to stop and get my milk. Can't, I don't know about you guys, but I can't live without my car. So anyway, after I stopped and got my milk, here's the marina. I'm driving into it right now. It really is a beautiful, I love this spot right here where you, all of a sudden it opens up and you can see the uh, the Mediterranean and you see the buildings of the marina, you can see straight ahead, you can see the uh, dry dock where we pull the boats out and get work done on them and everything. So I'm pretty pretty quick here, I'll be uh, getting into the boat. So this is the uh, one of the one of the roads of the marina. So uh, while I'm going to the boat and getting everything ready there, this is a good time to run the intro. So run the intro. That's good coffee. Well, okay, let's see what we can do. I'm gonna get my camera equipment and we'll head on out and see what kind of uh, video I can make for you or the marina. Well, I know I've done this video before about uh, the marina, but uh, this time I'm gonna try to do it a little bit better because I have the drone and uh, better equipment now and also we're still on lockdown so i can't go any places like uh like uh, any of the uh, of the places that would be more interesting for you guys to see right now so i'll just talk about the marina a little bit and tell you a little bit more about it i don't the uh the marina this hurt this marina in herzalia is uh is the largest marina in israel it's on the coastline of the mediterranean uh obviously the um we have one marina down in the south of uh, Israel, which is Elat, which is actually not on the Mediterranean, it's on the Red Sea. Herzliya is probably the best marina in Israel for many reasons. Number one, it's the largest. It has about a thousand boats in it. Uh, and uh, also, when you look at the place of it in, in, in uh, Israel, there's uh, five marinas, but there's only three that have uh, exits and entries to the country with uh, passports in the north is Haifa and then is Herzliya and then in the south is uh, southern part is Ashdod those are the three marinas that you can go in and out of the country and get your passport stamp now uh, Ashdod is close to Gaza and uh, and um, Haifa 
is close to uh, to Lebanon. So this is right in the middle of the country, so it's obviously the safest one to go in and out. Another thing that's good about this marina is uh, you have 26 piers, and on each pier you have its own personal gate with its with the own with your with the chip to get into that gate. So the security is high in this marina. So even if someone else had a boat that was on a dock next to me, on the pier next to me, they would not be able to get into my pier and vice versa because everyone has the chip that opens up their pier. To the south of, uh, of Herzliya is Tel Aviv, is the nearest uh, city. And to the north is, uh, is, um, is Netanya. Also, the beaches are really beautiful, but they're pretty empty right now because of uh, also the lockdown and Corona. And One thing good about the piers and the people in this marina, because of uh, being uh, so secure, people are open and friendly, and and uh, and well, also just in boats and boat people in general are usually very helpful to each other. Everyone helps each other. It's a uh, it's uh, it's a nice place to be with a boat. In this marina also you have uh, a few high-end hotels. You have the Ritz-Carlton, you have the Harrods, and a few others. But those are the two main ones, two high-end ones. As you can see, the uh, entrance to the marina points north. On all marinas in the state of Israel, on the coastline of the Mediterranean, all of them, their entrance to the marina points north. The, the entrance is the opening to the marinas on the north side. The reason is, is there's a, is the, is there a, there's a current, a constant current coming from the south up north. So they open, all the marinas are open to the, to the north so that they have so that the, the waves and the currents don't come into the marina as well as it doesn't build up the sandbars so much on the uh, on the entrance so you come straight from the north into the marina and uh, and you can and you come into the marina and it's a nice entrance it's really nice to uh, to uh, come through well just being out on a boat is always nice uh, so coming into the marina is a nice experience that way one of the most beautiful times of the day in any marina would be sunset, obviously, for obvious reasons. The colors and uh, pop and also the, uh, the water is usually a little bit calmer and you can see the, uh, the uh, like mirror effect of, uh, of all the other boats and everything in the water. And it's just, a, it's just a nice time of day to be on the water. The marina itself, if you see, you have uh, the straight line of the beach line of the coastline of Israel and the entire marina was built outside of that line, out into the sea. So, so it made it easier for them to, um, to, to dredge and keep, it, and keep the water deep enough for the boats with the keels to come in and out. So when you look from above, you can actually see how the marina it go, goes out into the sea. The, uh, they built a big shopping mall called the Arena, Arena Shopping Mall uh, here in Herzliya. On top of the mall, you also have uh, two big hotels. Um, and on the, on the roof of the shopping mall, the, because people live above it, they kind of decorated it so it would look nice when you're looking down. The shopping mall itself is pretty big, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it wasn't a success. They put in all high-end uh, shops in there where everything is very expensive and so people don't you, you can see a lot of people walking around enjoying themselves but they don't see much uh much m many people walking around with bags as uh, from stuff they have bought because everything in the marina is pretty expensive hey how you doing this is me watching the news getting everything ready for you so that i can have it for the tgr news section of the videos TGR News, broadcasting from the State of Israel. Welcome to Israel, to another TGR report. Absolutely, TGR News. Uh, Israel is waiting to get 5 million people vaccinated for the second vaccination so that they start uh, loosening up the restriction laws. That's what they said. Yeah, I got a thing. I'm sure everyone got a thing today on their phone saying they're trying to decide whether they want to cancel the uh, lockdown Sunday at midnight or... Or 
do it for another two weeks or a week or more, ten days maybe. Yeah, well, that was yeah. They they're doing. They're going to do it for more. They're going to at least another week. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, you know, they've closed it. They're really they, I, all the other all the other lockdowns here in Israel were serious, but not as serious as this one. Nope, that's true. This one has completely shut the country, whole country down. Absolutely, There's absolutely no no uh, tourist or anyone coming into the country. Even the Israelis who are visiting it in other countries and American stuff, they can't come home. Yeah, they turned it. They, they closed the airports down completely. Yeah. Where the, there are Israeli Jewish people out, off off of the country and want to come home, and they can't. They can't come home. No. Yeah. Uh, sounds like something you've been saying? Yeah, it sounds like something I've been saying, <laughs> uh, you know, because it's going to be a lot worse than that before it's all over with, because that's why hey, we have boats to go rescue Jews from Absolutely. Europe here uh, for the coming Holocaust, because this whole thing is just a, it's just a uh, harbinger of what, what's really about to happen. I mean, uh, when the war starts, the first time a missile hits in the middle of that airport, that's the end for commercial airlines for the next six months or a year, maybe forever. Maybe, yes. Yeah, but, uh, so the only way to get Jews out, out of Europe then would be by boats. And that's what we've been working on for years with all of our contacts and communications and, yeah. and boats. Yeah, yeah anyway. absolutely. Well, talking about what you were talking about earlier, it was, it's pretty much a done deal already. But they're going to extend the lockdown to at least the second or third week of February. This, that's, uh, you know, I'll tell you what I think it is. I think it's also a little bit of psychological warfare to yeah. get people to go and get vaccinated. Yeah, well, if they have to hurry up and get, do something. If I don't get to a barber pretty soon, I'm going to have to get a violin, you know. I, I told you, Ola does a good job. Yeah, well, Ola ain't going to cut my hair. Well, I can do it. No, I'm going to tell you a short story. I used to cut his hair when he was a kid, and I clipped his ear one time by accident. Of course, not by... Pr oh, no, it doesn't leave See, I, I have a flat ear? No, you know, uh, <laughs> let me have a drink of coffee. <laughs> Anyway, he wants to cut my hair. Guess why? <laughs> and I'm gonna leave my ears like they are. I'm not letting him cut my hair. Uh, well, I'll tell you something. Cut my hair and it did good. No, Mama's Mama way over there listening, and she said, "Do you hear what she said?" And I can't believe it. I can't believe she let you cut her hair. I didn't want to. She made me cut her hair. <laughs> Let's get back to the news. Anyway, large. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you something interesting. Is a large group of Israelis. They call themselves Camp Israel. Okay, I'm talking about a large group. This isn't a small number of people, and it's a wide variety of type of people. It's not some kind of specific typecast. They all have decided that the government is going to make them take the vaccine, and if they not, if they don't want to take the vaccine, they're going to be imprisoned. Ah. So what they decided to do is they they've left their technology behind, so you can't track them. Their iPhones and computers and everything, and are moving into the Negev desert. <laughs> well. Uh I'm sure that I'm sure there's, there's people down there would like to see them come because they're trying to civilize the desert, right? Trying to put civilization in the desert. That makes Ben Goyan happy. You know, that was yeah. his dream when he uh, in 1948 when he wanted to see the desert populated with Jews. Anyway, I don't know what's going to happen, Joe, but I do know this: uh, they're not going to be in prison. Israel's yeah. not going to imprison anyone. No, no, Israel's uh, not going to force a vaccine on anyone. And, and I, let me, let me, while we're talking about the vaccine, I got in a little bit of trouble with a, a good friend of mine, and uh, he's probably listening to this now, and I'm going to leave him nameless for, for, for obvious reasons. But it, I, I, uh, I once said something. I didn't. I don't believe it's the mark of the beast. I believe in order for you to get to have the mark of the beast, you have to agree that you're taking the mark of the beast in order to do business, in order to survive. And then that's a, that's a, you, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing. It's not, you can't be tricked into it. If you're tricked into it, I don't think you count. Plus it's gonna be a right hand or the forehead, right? But I don't know, but I will say this. If you take that vaccine, you're doing it at your own risk. You're doing this, plenty of information out there tells you all you need to know about the vaccine. I, I recommend that you don't take the vaccine. I recommend that you don't. But I wouldn't. Don't bother me if you do. I don't. I'm not going to believe you're. You've accepted the devil as your as your Messiah because you took the mark. Right. Uh, because you took. Excuse me. I shouldn't have said that. Because uh, you took the vaccine. Because you took the vaccine. Yeah. But anyway, we, that's the end of that subject. Okay. So Aviv Kochavi, he's a military uh, chief in command, and he usually doesn't talk very much on the news. So when he does, you should listen to him. And he speaks out to say the return of the nuclear deal with Iran from 2015 is a very dangerous idea. And he's saying this because he knows that uh, Biden, that's on the top of his docket, and it looks like that's what Biden's going to do. 
And it goes on to say, if any kind of deal is made within Israel, we'll have no choice but to take offensive role. He's already putting operational plans in place to be ready for it because he pretty much knows it's coming. It's serious. It really is. I think it's a shame to throw it. You know, this uh, Iran thing is a threat to the whole world, not just to Israel. I mean, but they're, they're specifically saying they'll wipe Israel off of the map. So that makes it a little more personal with us right here in Israel. But uh, the fact of the matter is that they, they, they hate everyone. They uh, hate all the Sunnis, they hate uh, the, all the other Arabs and the Will, 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 Will rights and all of that. They hate them all. So it's, uh, it's really bad news because, because we, we, uh, we, we've got to do something about it. Absolutely. You know, I, I would talk about something else now, the, uh, in, in, but related. The, uh, I, I'm, I'm maybe it's because I'm a positive person, but I don't believe that all the Democrats in America are really that evil and bad people. I, know that, I just think on well, the mass majority of them, they just, they're just, they just don't have the right information. If you would tell me that, that when someone voted for Biden this past election, they knew that they were voting for someone to allow Iran to, to go back to the nuclear deal they had, which could invert mean hundreds of millions, thousands or even millions of Israelis die because of that one vote, that one bout that they put in. If you, I don't believe that they understood that. I don't know. It's a lot of brainwashing been going on. It this didn't start, by the way, with the with the COVID nineteen. It started several decades ago, uh, when Khrushchev said he'll he'll bury America without firing a shot. You know that it would crumble from within, and he was seeing that. But they had a plan even back then, and they've been operating it flaw almost flawlessly up to this point with the schools, the education, the the media, uh, the finances, everything. They 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 moved people into all of these places for all these years, all these decades, and now we wonder why that uh, the media is, is, is controlled by uh, Russia or China mm. or whatever. It, it's, uh, it's sad, and, and, and if you can control the information that people receive, you control the people. Absolutely. You can, you, there'll always be a few like us uh, that do our own st studying and our own thinking, but the majority will go right along with the uh, CNN and uh, then NBC and CBS, ABC, all of that, they'll just keep going right along with them. Yep. And if they're owned and controlled by the communists, well, you know what's happening. And the, re and the real proof of that is the millennials. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, are, they are the absolute fact proof of what I'm saying. Uh, they say now that way over 50% of them want the country to be communist or at least socialist. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Oh, it is amazing. It is amazing. But it's, it, we got some big problems here, too. Uh, you know, in Lebanon right now, uh, the hospitals are completely full and overrunning. They can't take anymore. And also here in Israel. Uh, yep. Yeah. A couple of people died yesterday just because there was no place to admit them. Our friend, he, 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 he couldn't find out. He died on the way to the hospital because this hospital was full. Yeah. And, uh, and another thing, you know, we're not hearing much on the news, almost nothing on the news. In Syria, they got over 50 million refugees. 50 million refugees and COVID-19 is running rapid in those refugee camps. Uh, it's it just, uh, it, we, we're only getting just little specks of the news here and there and yonder. We, and we think we know what's happening globally. Most, I'll tell you what's happening globally. God is upset with the, with, with the moral condition of this world. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and if it, if we don't, he's given us a chance. He gave, us, uh, he gave America a gigantic chance called Donald President Trump. Trump. Yeah. If you don't believe President Trump was ordained by God to be the president, you, you missed something in the last three or four years. You've been hiding into a, a Democrat blanket or something. But it's, uh, it's, really, it's really, really sad. And I'm going to tell you another thing, another proof of what's going on with Biden. He just canceled the, the, the sale of the F F F-35s to the UAE. Now, I'm sort of happy he did it because I think it was a bad thing to start with. But, uh, but, but, but that's not why he did it. He didn't do it that way. He, he's controlled by the Shiites, not by the Sunnis. And the Shiites doesn't like the idea of all the Sunnis getting, getting advanced weaponry because they're at war with the Shiites just like Israel is. Yeah. So uh, they didn't like that either. So, so and, and uh, while I'm talking, I want to tell you something else. Okay. I want to tell you what the... And I don't. And this is not. This is not a surprise to I'm sure everyone listening. But most of you will already know about this. But Bill Gates and Murdoch are buying unbelievable amounts of thousands and tens of thousands of farmland in America, 
all over America they're buying the format. Why are they doing it? Because they know the next big panic, the really big thing coming is going to be a shortage of food. Most of the, most of the floods and the, and the earthquakes and the fires and, the, and all the bad droughts and everything have all around the globe, all, almost all, all of them been in the, in the breadbasket areas where the food is grown. Yeah. So uh, the next big problem is going to be food. So that's also that's another reason for you to be a prepper. If, 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 I know people make fun of that word prepper, but go ahead, stock up something. What are you going to, you're going to eat it anyway. You're going to have to buy it eventually anyway. Just go ahead and buy it and try, try to help your family out a little bit. Anyway, we, you know, this ministry, I've got to say something about the ministry. We've been working for years with boats and people around the eastern Mediterranean, the Greek islands, Turkey, Cyprus, trying to make re uh, provisions for the Jews in, in the Europe will have a way to get out of there when, when they just, just can't find no other way. There will be no, no commercial flights, no, no commercial way to get out of there. The only way they're going to get out of there is with my boats. God showed me that years ago, and I started planning years ago. And some of you have been with me for over, well, many, many years, some up to 40 or 40, almost 50 years. I'm an old man. But uh, the thing is, they, 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 they didn't know then how important this ministry was. I've always known how important it is. Uh, and, if we're in, and we're in a tight situation right now because of the COVID and, and, uh, and just, just a law and, 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 and satanic attacks on our finances and, uh, and every other kind of way. Uh, we, need, we need to hear from as many of the supporters of this ministry as we possibly can. Because uh, right now we need to be ready. It, I mean, it, the, the, the alarm's getting ready to go off. And we're not really ready. And all those boats are up there with the people that we, we could contact to help us that have boats, most of them are yachties. You know what? A yachty is a person that has a nice, pretty nice little boat. They don't have any money. He's on a fixed income, Social Security or some military income. Yep. He doesn't have any money to, to go into an operation like this because it's going to take a lot of money. Uh, so they're depending on us to be able to help them with their finances as well. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Shabbat shalom.